Why are you watching me again? Eric the Car Guy here with another Eric the Car Guy video. I, I know you're gonna like this one and I'm, I'm actually a little bit excited because I have a for real, real world electrical problem that needs to be solved. Behind me I have a 1996 Acura 3.5 RL. The issue is it overheated and actually the upper radiator hose was leaking. But after replacing the upper radiator hose and bleeding the cooling system, during the process of bleeding the cooling system, what I found was the condenser fan was not operational. So I then went and did a diagnosis on why that fan was not working. So why don't you come along with me and uh, we will explore what the problem was with the condenser fan on this RL. It's gonna be exciting. Let's go. Well, I apologize that I didn't take you along the step-by-step -step of how I got here, but I'm gonna take you through the step-by-step -step of how I got here. What is step one in our electrical diagnosis that we uh, have established in other videos? Uh, and that first step is to check the fuses. The condenser fan has a 20 amp fuse right here in the front, and this fuse is good. So we know the fuse is good, uh, so the next thing I, the next step that I took is I know that there is a relay. We also have a video on relays and we'll put a link in the description to that video. Um, there's a relay here that controls the operation of the fan. And remember relays use low amperage circuits to control high amperage circuits and a cooling fan is a prime example of this. So they basically switch the, the coil side of this relay, it closes the other side and allows the cooling fan to work. So I've removed the relay, and as you can see, there's some burning here. And the reason for that was is uh, earlier in the summer, this, this vehicle had a cooling fan that was bad. So this cooling fan was bad. And as a result, the uh, condenser fan ended up doing double duty and did some melting of that connector and stuff in there. In fact, I've considered actually taking these connections and moving them over into this location uh, since I have the back of the relay box off. But anyway, this is the location of the condenser fan here, or condenser fan relay, and here's the relay itself. So anyway, what we should be able to do, well, why don't we take this a step further, the next step. The next step after you check all the fuses and everything is to uh, get yourself a wiring diagram. Um, so let's, let's go over and take a look at that wiring diagram and see how the cir circuit is supposed to work. Okay, everybody. I have taken the liberty of printing up and marking off this wiring diagram for this condenser fan circuit. Uh, and just for those of you wondering, I got this from Mitchell DIY uh, online. So as far as wiring diagrams or the way they're set up in Honda is it always starts with power at the top and flows down to grounds at the bottom. So your, your powers, like your fuses and all that stuff, where things get their power from is going to be up there and it's going to flow all the way down through the circuit to the ground side or earth uh, as some of you might refer to it as. I've highlighted all the major players here. There's the condenser fan motor um, and this is the condenser fan relay. Also there's a main uh, radiator fan relay that actually works both the cooling fan and condenser fan. And then there's this uh, fan control module which also comes into play. But we're mostly concerned with what's happening right here because this is what we're looking at on the car. Now, uh, if we follow this, now, what I've done is I've made all the powers red and I kind of messed this one up. I made this one uh, green instead of red, but all the reds are going to be the power feeds and all the greens are going to be the ground side. So I've tried to make it easy to, to see and understand. But starting with the main um, power going through the condenser fan and through the condenser fan relay. For those of you uh, that saw the relay video, I'll put a link in the description to this, but relays, the way they work is they use the low amp circuit to control a high amp circuit, and cooling fans are a perfect example of this. Uh, and as you can see, we're using our low amp side to control the high amp side. The, the uh, cooling fan is our high amp side of the circuit. So the high amp side of the circuit we have up here in the underhood fuse relay box, we have this fuse 50, which is hot at all times, which means doesn't matter, key on, key off, whatever, there's always going to be power here, or there always should be power here, going to the condenser fan relay. Now, when the relay is active and the circuit closes and allows power to flow out to the condenser fan itself, 
It flows out to the condenser fan, and then once it gets there, the ground side of the circuit grounds through this uh, main f radiator fan relay. So when this relay is active, this provides ground not only for the condenser fan, but also for the radiator fan. Now, we know the radiator fan works, so I believe it's reasonable to assume that this uh, ground side of this circuit is also good. So we're good there. Now we need to also look at the control side of the relay, which is basically what turns the switch on and off. So this is the dude that flips the switch that tells the fan to come on. Now it gets its power up here at the uh, fuse number three in the under dash fuse box. It comes out of there and then goes down into the control side, the coil side of this relay. And then it is energized when the circuit is grounded, if we follow that up, through this fan control module, which has its ground here, uh, they're kind enough to tell us at the right kick panel. So that's that's where the control module gets its ground. But basically, what I'm seeing here is this control module is like the guy at the switch. So it it gets its inputs from other places, but then it says, okay, it's time to turn the condenser fan on, and it energizes this part of the relay. The relay closes. The condenser fan works. And then when the relay opens after the fan control module says, okay, enough of that cooling fan, it basically de-energizes this and you have no current flow. Now, what does that mean to us in our testing? Okay, well, what this means is, is since this white wire, which goes all the way up to this fuse 50 here, um, at this white wire, what we're looking for is power all the time. So we can check at this white wire and see if we have that power that's there all the time. If we do, we can say to ourselves, well, that side of the circuit is good. Now, as far as the ground side goes, um, we can, uh, which is basically through the fan motor and down through here, like I said, I think we can reasonably assume this is good, but we can check for ground here. But what we can do as far as a test is we can actually jump across this white and this blue wire, and if the, the condenser fan works then, then we know that that side of the circuit is good. We know that the power coming down to it, we know that the ground is good, we know the fan is good. We can eliminate everything if we just jump across these two things. Now, that leaves us with the control side of the circuit. So, what we need to do for that side, for this black yellow wire, which gets its power when it's in run, we need to turn the key on to the run position, and we need to check for power right here at this black yellow wire. If we have power there, then the next place we need to go is we need to check for this ground side of the circuit, which basically goes through this control unit. This is going to be a little more difficult because um, we can look to see if we're getting a ground signal from here, but more importantly, I think we need to check the integrity of the wire, this blue-orange wire, from there to the relay. So we need to check if, if we find that we don't have a ground here when the condenser fan is supposed to be active. We need to see if that ground is actually coming out of this fan control module and if this wire is good. And if it's not, then we may be looking at a fan control module issue. But that's basically the breakdown. The relay basically is the guy that, that, that tells the condenser fan to go on and off. It gets its power and ground, hot all the time in the white. The blue is predominantly the ground side of the circuit because that's what goes through the motor and then and eventually to ground or earth. So if this is all good, then we need to look to control side. If this is good, hot key on, then we know that, that that's, that's working like it should. And we need to look at this blue-orange wire going to the fan control module, see if that's any good. And if it's not, then we may be looking at a fan control module problem. But that's, that's basically how you would read a wiring diagram in order to learn the circuit, in order to figure out a plan of attack for your diagnosis and your testing so that you can narrow down the cause of a failure like this. Let's go over to the car and check these uh, wires here, the white and the blue. Back at the relay box, I have uh, basically my fancy test light with my power probe and I can look and see. Uh, I have ground on that side. I have power on that side. So I have what I should be, should have here. And now all I need to do is jump these two uh, terminals and the fan should run. All right, well, I'm just gonna take my pocket screwdriver since we have enough damage down in here. Uh, and I'm just gonna touch these two things together and the uh, cooling fan should run. Or the condenser fan, sorry. It's running. So all I did was short these two out with my pocket screwdriver. I touched them both together. Don't worry, this is what's supposed to happen. I read the wiring diagram, I know this and I could turn the condenser fan on and off 
right from here. So we know everything on that side of the circuit is good. So now we need to look at the control side of the circuit, which is this side. So one of these was a blue orange wire and I think the other one was a white wire. Not real sure. So let's flip it over. Okay, you know, we have a black yellow wire and we have the blue orange wire. The blue orange wire should be ground. This black yellow wire supplies power to this side of the relay, the control side of the relay. And that is supposed to be hot with the key on. So why don't we turn the key on and see if we have power here at this black yellow wire. We just need to turn the key on, we don't need to turn it over. Okay, now that the key is on, let's see if we have power at that black yellow wire. And you can see that we do. So when I touch the back of the black yellow wire, we got power there. So now, this leaves that fan control unit and this blue orange wire, but control units are really difficult to condemn. What I want to do is I want to eliminate all possibilities around the control unit itself. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to check the continuity of this blue orange wire between here, this connection inside the relay box, and the connection at the control unit itself. Now I've already done some digging. This is the passenger floorboard here. And this is a shield that goes over the computer back here, and this is the computer for this uh, vehicle. Here's the connector for the control unit, and the control unit is actually mounted up underneath this cover. So I'm just gonna take this cover, stick it out of the way, so we can get a better view of what we're doing. So this control unit, fan control unit, is connected to this uh, black connector here. Uh, and it controls the ground side of that condenser fan relay. And if we look on the back here, we can see right here is our blue orange wire. So I don't like to like stick things in the connector side. I, I basically prefer to back probe. Uh, this way I don't you know mess up the connection for a later time. But what I'm doing is I'm just taking this this stick pin that I have and sticking it into the back of the connector to, to back probe that that blue orange wire. And I'm gonna take my DVOM and I have it set to ohm scale and I actually have it set for auto ranging. Whenever I touch the leads together I, it beeps and gives me continuity readings. Now you can see my leads have about almost half an ohm resistance in them just as it is. And this is important because if something has too much resistance and it's actually a result of my leads, I, I want to know that now. Now my leads aren't really long enough to reach all the way under the hood to that uh, location. So I have a jumper wire that I'm going to use out under the hood and then I'm going to uh, connect one of these leads to the uh, positive side and then the other lead as I'm going to check here and I'll be effectively checking the resistance of this wire to find out if this wire is bad that goes to this control unit. If this wire is good, then I can reasonably assume that the problem is in this control unit. If the wire is bad, then I need to find out where and why. But for now, let's just see if we've got continuity between here and that relay because if this, the ground signal coming out of this control unit is not reaching the relay, the control side of the relay, the relay is not going to work, the fan's never going to turn on. And we already know the fan can turn on because we basically bypass the relay by jumping those connectors inside the relay box. So we know it can work and we know that our problem is on the control side. So this should basically help prove out whether or not this is a wiring issue or an issue with this control unit. Dun dun dun! This alligator clip won't necessarily fit down in there too well to give me a good connection. So I've got this little spade connector that come, came with my, my power probe kit that I'm just gonna shove down in there. And I'm gonna connect my alligator clip to that. So basically, I'll give you some light there. So basically what I've done is I've got this stuck down into the, the cavity where the blue orange wire goes to. 
and I have it connected to this alligator clip. Then I'm gonna take the other end of the alligator clip and connect it to my uh, lead for my meter. And this is on plastic, so you don't really want this to be touching metal. Could give you a false reading. I'll try to get as much length out of this as I can. So, that's connected down inside the relay box. I'm gonna come around and put my meter inside here. And I already have my pin set up here so that when I touch my lead here, I should get a reading up here on the meter. So here we go. Well, as long as my meter wants to stay. I'm gonna move the meter down here. It's actually easier for you to see anyway. I think it's also important to note that I've turned the key off. Turns out when the meter fell, it actually disconnected everything under the hood. That's kind of jumping all over the place. Remember, it's, it's showing about a half an ohm's resistance, about a half an ohm or 0.7 ohm's resistance. Because remember, when I just touched my leads together, there was half an ohm resistance. So I can basically subtract that from this final reading. But it's not like that this is open. There might be half an ohm resistance in this harness from, from here to the relay. And that could just be corrosion at the terminal, whatever, but half an ohm's resistance, I don't think is going to be enough to make the cooling fan relay not to work. I actually, at this point, suspect that our culprit is right here, and it's this uh, fan relay control unit. So, it just so happens that I have one of these in my parts stash. Remember, I worked at Acura for years, so I... Whenever possible, I would grab stuff like this and keep it because I'm going to be honest with you, these are kind of a known problem on Acuras and Hondas. So anytime I had the opportunity to get one of these, like out of a salvage vehicle or something, I grabbed it. And we're going to see today if this helps. So we're going to plug our relay in back under the hood and hook everything back up. We're going to get it up to temperature, uh, plug in a new fan control unit and see if the fan operates normally now. All right, so there's my, I believe, known good relay that I've plugged in. And let's fire it up and see how the cooling fans work. You know, I just thought of something. I can actually cheat a little bit and turn the condenser fan on now by turning on the air conditioning. So I can just activate the air conditioning and both fans should be active right now. This is the condenser fan and it's spinning. Cooling fan is also spinning. Now I'm just gonna sit here with this at about 2000 RPM until I see the temperature gauge go up to about the middle. And then when it does, I'm going to go out under the hood and take a look to see if the fans are working. Okay, I'm going to activate the throttle from out here. This is the cooling fan over on this side, and you can barely get a glimpse of the condenser fan here. See, both fans are operational now, whereas they weren't before. Now they're turning off. So I think we fixed it. In fact, we can verify it by plugging in the old control unit and seeing if it still works. All right, before I swap it over, I'm going to turn it off.
Here's our original one. Okay, same experiment. Ah, and of course it works now. But look, the cooling fan is not working. Focus. The cooling fan is not running. The condenser fan is, but the cooling fan isn't. They both should be running. Intermittent electrical problems are like the worst to try and track down. Uh, in fact, this was an intermittent problem. Uh, he came in one day and showed me, you know, he was having an overheat problem and everything was working fine. And then he calls me up a few hours later, says he's sitting in traffic on the highway and he's starting to overheat. Come to find out that that condenser fan wasn't operating properly and then this hose went on him on top of that. But what's, what's kind of cool about this is it, it's not exactly serviceable, but you can open it up and see if possibly there's a, uh, you know, some kind of issue in there. Anybody want any ice cream? <laughs> so you can open this thing up and take a look at the circuit board. If you saw like a burn spot on the circuit board, that could add even more credence to the theory. Or if you saw like maybe a diode or something on here that was a little, little too hot, um, that, could, that could indicate something. Uh, you won't always be able to open these up. I can also say that uh, your part supplier is not gonna let you do what I just did. Uh, so if you don't happen to have a component that you can swap out that you suspect is bad, you're gonna have to test around it just like I did in this video. Uh, you often can't return electrical parts and many electrical parts such as this need to be special ordered. If a uh, parts place is gonna special order something like this for you, they're not gonna to wanna to send it back because they already paid for it and they want you to pay for it. If you have something like this to swap out, great. And, and maybe you might wanna go and try this first. Like I said, this is a known issue on Hondas. However, I like evidence. I really like evidence and you're not always going to have access to parts like this. Therefore, if you take a look at the wiregram, wiring diagram like we looked at earlier, uh, you can actually trace the circuit and see how it's supposed to work, what wires you're working with. Uh, without knowing the color wires and where this stuff was, uh, you're lost. You, you, you're going to have to like dig through the harness and like follow that wire the whole way. But this way with the wiring diagram, I knew that there was a fan control unit that was located uh, up underneath the passenger side near the computer. I, I knew where this was because I've worked on these cars before, but you're not always going to know. So you need that information. Wiring diagrams are key with electrical problems. But I'm glad we got a chance to apply this knowledge. We talked about relays in, in, a, in a video I did in the past, so now you can refer to that. Uh, link in the description to that video. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. I post videos on Mondays and Fridays here at Eric the Car Guy. And you can find me at uh, Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, in addition to ericthecarguy.com, where you can always find me and ask your automotive questions. Just type a couple of keywords into the search function or head over to our forum and talk to us friendly folk over there. And I am going to close with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. Enjoy. And you know, one more thing, I'm also going to post a link to the uh, basic electrical diagnosis to go along with this because I think it's a nice little companion. And we'll just, anytime I get these electrical issues in, I'm, I'm going to go for it. So uh, we, will, we will do our best to fill out our electrical diagnostic library here at Eric the Car Guy. Stay dirty, everybody. See you next time.